a quick and important lab here on the description and interface range commands. And description is certainly not required. You don't have to put it on every port, but it's a good idea to use it occasionally. One way that you would need to use it is say if you had a port or a group of ports performing a specific task, like traffic monitoring. I'm not saying that our end users are not important, but if you are using a port perhaps for an unusual reason, you would want to label that and let the other network admins know. If they lead to a particularly important or a sensitive host, you might want to note that as well. And I'm going to show you another use for it here along with the interface range command. Because on our Cisco switches, where the ports are open by default, we may want to close the unused ports for security purposes. As a matter of fact, that's a great best practice to go with. So let's say that on the switch we're on right now, and are still on, pardon me there, we'll line it up. I want to close ports 12 through 24, all fast ethernet ports. And I also don't want them opened unless someone gets authorization from me. And that sounds like uh, the description command would come in handy because someone could come in, you know, a week later, a month later, well, all these ports are closed. Let's open these up. You know, that's silly. Well, if you put a description line in there that says you have to get authorization from person X before opening these ports, uh, that would be a good thing to do. So let's use the interface range command here because if we do this one port at a time, you know, in, uh, interface fast zero slash 12, description, blah, 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 you know, then shut down and we have to do that on every port, that's a lot of typing. And even if you're doing cut and pasting, that's a lot of cutting and pasting. And what if I wanted to put a certain description on 64 ports on a 64 port switch? And you know, you don't want to copy and paste that many times. You sure don't want to type all that in. So interface range is definitely your friend. It takes a little getting used to, but not a whole lot. And with interface, we pardon me, we see all of these interface types, and down here at the very bottom, we see range. So it's telling us about all the different kind of interfaces we could have, and then oh yeah, range. So it's just interface range. Then it's going to give you your little list here, and we'll go with that. Then I'm going to use iOS help to illustrate each one. And here I'm going to go with 12 to start my range. And then I can go through, hopefully, 24. And with the comma, you can add extra ports. You know, if I was doing every other port, you know, 12, 14, 16, etc., then I could use my comma instead of the dash and just indicate each individual port that you would need. Now on some iOS's I've run into, you've got to leave a space between the 12 and the dash and the 24. So if you run into that and you put this command in that we have on the screen right now without the spaces in it, and it comes back to you and says unrecognized command and the caret would be pointing right at the space after the, after the 12 or the space you don't have, it's really easy, and I think that's where people used to get frustrated with a command. It's like, well, what do you mean, you know, incomplete command or incorrect command? Well, the thing is, it was just asking for a space. Most iOSs I run into now do not require that space. Little real world for you there. But here, you can see now that I dropped into config IF range or interface range. So everything I do from here on out is going to apply to all of the ports in that range. And I'm just going to put description. and put that in and then I'm going to do a shut and close your eyes we should see a lot of shutdown and there they go so it looks like the range command worked and we see change state to administratively down as we expect with the shutdown port and also if you take a look at the config from here on out a lot of stuff we put on there earlier some VLANs now notice you see that description next to every port that we saw in that range. So that's a good thing to note, especially again with ports that are leading to non-end users uh, that may need a little special treatment in case there's a problem or you need someone notified before a change is made. You could do it just like that with the description command and use interface range to make it all happen at one time. That is it for switching for right now. I have a feeling we'll revisit it a little bit here in the future. But coming up next, we're going to spend some time at layer four. We're going to talk about those TCP UDP differences and similarities and how they operate. I'm going to hit that for a few minutes and then it is on to tons of routing. So see you there.